Hi guys, this is Rich with Wild Wonderful Weekends, and today I wanted to make a quick video to show you exactly the steps that you need to take to self-unlock your DJI drone so that you can fly in a geo-authorization zone. Uh, I got to experience how frustrating this can be firsthand. A couple weeks ago I was at Hilton Head Island, and there was a piece of property there that I wanted to shoot. It was fairly close to the Hilton Head Island airport, and so I was in Class D controlled airspace. I was able to get link authorization, and if you aren't familiar with that term, I'll explain it again in more detail in just a bit. But once I got to the site where I was actually going to shoot, I wasn't able to unlock my drone because I didn't have good cell reception there. So I had to come back to the apartment I was staying in and try to unlock through their website. And it was a little bit of a hassle. There are some things on there that aren't very clearly explained. And so I know that some people have had so much frustration with this that they've actually gone and bought different brands of drones. Uh, I've seen on forums that folks have gone to Autel, for instance. And Autel makes a fine drone, I'm sure, but for, for me, I'm already used to DJI. I like the way that their video looks. I think it's very natural in color. I'm, I really like the way the drones fly. So the good news is, is that you can unlock these things. I'm going to show you exactly the way that I did it. There's probably more than one, one way to do this, but I'm going to show you the way that I had the best luck with. Um, and it, even though things are a little bit of a hassle, it can be done. And it may, if you want to hang on to your DJI and you don't want to move to another platform, another brand, uh, stick around and, and see how I got it done. So the first thing you need to do is actually kind of a step zero because you probably already have done this step. Uh, when you downloaded your DJI Fly or DJI Go app, you probably already registered. If not, though, you definitely want to go out to DJI.com and go ahead and get set up. Um, you can click the little person icon up here in the upper right of the website. And uh, if you're not already registered, you'll have a chance to register in the menu. Okay, so the next thing you're going to need is an app that's going to let you get LINK authorization. And LINK stands for Low Altitude Authorization and Notification Capabilities. So for instance, the airspace that I needed to fly in the other day was Class D from the surface up to 2,000 feet. But I was able to get authorized in a matter of minutes to fly up to 200 feet using a LINK app. Now there are a couple popular options for LINK apps that you can get. AirMap is one of them. But I'm going to go ahead and recommend Kitty Hawk because it's just as easy to use and it's just as reliable as AirMap but it definitely works better with low budget text and talk providers and Google phone numbers. Uh, I tried to use it. I use a, I use a cheap app called text now and I was trying to use air map with it and it just would not work with that phone number, but Kitty Hawk will. So if you don't already have Kitty Hawk, go ahead and pause the video and get that uh, downloaded and installed on your phone. Okay. So now that you've downloaded and installed Kitty Hawk on your phone, let's talk about how to actually use it to get link authorization. So this is what the program looks like when you first launch it. And what we're going to do is we are going to touch maps. And we're going to hit search. And I'm going to show you exactly uh, the area that I was shooting last. And that's it right there, 663 William Hilton Parkway, Hilton Head Island. So go ahead and select that. It brings it up on the map there. And now if we swipe upwards, you see get authorization is checked. If no authorization was required for this area, if this was just golf airspace, we wouldn't see that checkbox. But this means that there, of course, is controlled airspace in this area because of the airport. And um, we see here that we can get authorization, automatic authorization, uh, for up to 200 feet. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and tap Get Authorization. And it's going to ask here what type of flight you're planning to do. And you can get link authorization whether you're flying Part 107 or recreational. Uh, but if you are certified at Drone Pilot, go ahead and choose Part 107 Commercial. It's going to let you know how to create your flight area. Just say Got It. And the first question it's going to ask is how high do you need to fly? Now, since I looked at on the last screen that I could get authorization to fly up to 200 feet, I'm just going to go ahead and select 200 feet. Actually, you can't tap it. That's right. You have to drag it over 200 feet. And I'm going to say next. Okay, and here's when you're going to say when you're going to intend to fly and for how long you intend to fly. So I'm not going to say now. I'm going to say we're going to do it tomorrow because I typically like to plan ahead a little bit anyway. So we'll say it's going to be tomorrow. And sure, uh, we'll say 2 p.m. Say OK. And flight duration, uh, we'll say we're going to fly for one hour. 
say OK. And it's going to give you some notes on the authorization that you're asking for. Go ahead and click Next. Okay, and it says we're eligible for auto approval. It lets us know again the, the authorizing airport, what type of airspace we're in. It just gives us some general information about it there. And it's important to read this, but I'm just taking you through the steps, so when you do this, be sure and read it on your own. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and say next again. Then it brings up a form here that's going to show the information that it's going to submit to the FAA. I'm going to agree and submit. And I just got my text letting me know that my request has been approved. So now I have link authorization to fly in that airspace at the date and time and the location that I specified on my application. So the next step now is to go to DJI's website to, un to self unlock the drone and I'll show you how to do that now. Now that we have link authorization, we need to go to DJI's website to unlock our drone. And I'll put links in the description to both the Kitty Hawk website and the DJI website. The URL is dji.com slash fly safe slash self dash unlock. And just under the part of the page that says self unlocking, you're going to select the area where you're going to fly. Mine defaults to North America and the United States, which is exactly what I need, so I'm going to leave that alone. Down just a little further, you have the option to select custom unlocking or self unlocking. It's already on self unlocking, which is what we need, so I'll leave that alone. Then it describes the steps you're going to take in order to unlock your drone. I'm going to walk you through, the, through those. And you scroll down to the map area. Now this is the area that gives most people trouble and confusion, and it definitely gave me some trouble too. The first thing you're going to do in the pick list is select the drone that you're going to be flying. I'm going to select Mavic Mini. You can also choose what type of areas or areas are going to show up on the map. I want to go ahead and unselect warning zones because that can actually get in the way of some of the information that we're going to need to unlock the drone. So now at the top of the map in the search bar, I'm going to enter the address where I'm going to be, or close to it anyway. Once the map updates, it drops a pin in the location that you searched for. You scroll down and the instruction is select a zone to unlock. And in the first box it says click on the pin to select an area to unlock. Well, it seems intuitive that you would click the pin that it just dropped where you're going to be flying so that you can unlock that area. But if you click that and you scroll back down to the box, you see that nothing actually happens. And if you try to go forward, you're going to get an area that says you need to click an area to unlock. So that's definitely confusing. What it's actually needing you to do is to click the pin of the airport with the controlling authority for the area that you need to unlock. And in order to even get that to show up, you have to zoom in quite a bit. So I'm going to zoom in on the island here and wait for everything to update. Okay, and there it is. It finally pops in. So I can zoom back out a little bit now. And you see that I am in controlled airspace right here where I want to fly. And up here is the pin for the airport. So now if I click that pin, the box gets populated here with Hilton Head Island. And now we can actually input our flight controller serial number. To get your flight controller serial number from DJI Fly, and it'll be very similar in DJI Go, I'm just going to go to your menu, go to About, and then scroll down. Until you find flight controller serial number. Now that we have our flight controller serial number and we have it entered in this box, we're going to go just a little below and select the date range from uh, we need this to be unlocked for. I'm going to go ahead and accept these defaults as though I were going to fly just today and I'm going to click submit. A new form comes up for you to verify your DJI account before unlocking the authorization zone. And you have to show that you do, you have to agree rather that you do have authorization to fly here. And that's what we did with our link authorization and that you accept full responsibility for the flight. And then it tells you to choose your pref uh, preferred verification method, but mobile is the only option they give you. You fill out your mobile phone information.
agree to the terms and conditions, and then click send. <laughs> and then you'll be texted a code, and you'll enter it here. Four, six, six. Click verify, and the verification is going to be complete, and you can proceed. Let you know that the unlock was successful, and that you can check your unlocking license in the DJI app. And uh, so that's what I'll show you next. Okay, so this final step I suggest that you do while you are somewhere that you have cell service or uh, internet, because you don't want to get out on site and try to unlock your drone and it not work. So uh, it said that uh, it said on the DJI website now that the license would be updated for unlocking on the DJI app. So I'm going to go ahead and open the app here, and I'm going to go under safety. And I'm just going to scroll down until I see unlock Geo Zone. We select that, and it says that we have one uh, flight controller license for unlocking Hilton Head. I'm going to go ahead and say import to aircraft. And now that information should be on my drone, and when I want to take off, it should take off. But what I found is that isn't always the case unless I come to this next tab right here for unlocking license and toggle this button. And now it's going to ask me to reconfirm that I'm qualified to fly in this area and that I agree to, full, uh, agree to assume full liability for flying in this area. And I'll say OK to that. And one more time. Well, it says it's already imported, so that's good. So now when I go to fly, it actually should be unlocked and everything should be fine. Okay, so there you go. I hope that works for you and I hope it helps. Uh, I've only had to do that once, but each one of those steps seemed to be necessary in order for me to be able to unlock my drone to fly in that geo zone. Definitely not convenient. Uh, I really like DJI products. I love my drones. Uh, I think they take great video and pictures, but the geofencing thing is a little bit of a pain in the butt. But if you want to make it work instead of moving to a different brand or something like that, uh, give that a shot. And uh, like I say, hopefully that works for you. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoy these videos, please like and subscribe. Take care.